Good day. It's a pleasure to uh, be part of the Scottsdale Interventional Forum 2020 virtual sessions. My thanks to Dr. Reisick and the organizing committee. It is a pleasure to speak today on uh, being out on a limb for vascular access management with ECMO and Impella. Here's here. Um, so what are our interests in understanding um, how to protect legs? Well, large sheaths, which are required for Impella and ECMO, result in bleeding and ischemia. And um, this was uh, uh, nicely characterized by Alex Truesdell, a colleague of mine, thinking about the three C's for understanding this, um, for optimal vascular access. What's the caliber? How much calcium is there? And how curved is it? We know that when patients have bleeding complications, they do worse. And clearly, as we start to use larger devices, which are essential to, be, to really get our patients through complex PCI situations, we're going to have increases in hematoma, transfusions, or re-interventions. And with these events, poor outcomes occur. So our goal is to really avoid major vascular complications um, to the best we can by using optimal technique. So how do we actually think about limb protection during mechanical circulatory support? Um, there really are three steps to be thinking about the pre-MCS implantation when possible, if there's time, um, the intra-procedural protection, and actually during MCS removal. During our pre-implantation technique, we're going to use meticulous access. We're going to assess the iliofemoral circulation ahead of time with CTAs or abdominal angiography. Um, we look for alternative access in very complicated uh, situations where um, the lower limbs might be affected, alternative access in the axillary arteries might be possible. Um, we have time in certain situations to have peripheral arterial disease treated prior to MCS placement, and if it's a common environment, placing an anagrade perfuser prior to placing the larger um, uh, retrograde sheath um, can actually simplify post-procedural um, uh, perfusion of the leg. During the protection of the case, we are going to try to minimize additional access sites. We can use a single site access um, PCI technique through the impella sheath, uh, pioneered by Jason Walmuth and colleagues. Um, we can assess limb flow, um, particularly for the impella, which doesn't always have to use an integrated perfuser, but uh, may. Um, ipsilateral perfusion um, is important to understand, uh, understand crossover techniques uh, for ECMO and impella placement, um, such as external thumb fans. And when we're removing the uh, impella, or large, uh, particularly the impella, there's an opportunity post-closure. We don't necessarily have to do manual com compression, which is often um, an uncontrolled situation. And there are techniques now where we can uh, place a balloon north of the impella site, a clean flow to allow us to do dry closure. This is a much more controlled way to deploy per closes. Contemporary access really utilizes more than just our physical hands to feel the pulse. We are going to identify a marked femoral head. We're trying to avoid being too high or too low, but really being in the middle third to upper third of that femoral head. We're going to visualize by ultrasound. Where's the common femoral artery and vein? Where's the SFA and the profunda? We're going to be looking in both axial and um, radial um, projections of the ultrasound, trying to understand where's the optimal place to puncture, avoiding calcified sites and disease zones. We're going to triangulate these areas, um, recognizing that the ultrasound transducer is several centimeters away. So we actually have to compensate for that when we actually make our incision, make a good track, and then place our micropuncture needle. Before we actually puncture the vessel, we want to recheck um, by uh, fluoroscopy to make sure we are not too high. Ultrasound guidance alone can lead to higher sticks, in which case that can be obviously severe complications. So we're going to avoid that by, before actually entering the artery, taking a quick fluoro check to make sure that we're not too high. And then ultimately doing an angiogram, this can be done through the micropuncture dilator or through the actual sheath with a wire up, the four French stiff sheath. This allows us to, if we have made an incorrect placement, at least we can remove the dilator one French or the four French micropuncture sheath um, and hold compression without having placed a larger sheath, which would cause a much greater complication. So here's an example of femoral angiography with the wire up. You can see here that the femoral needle is right here in the mid femoral head. Really nice placement. We'll watch the wire go up all the way. Then through the dilator um, or through a four French sheath with the wire up, we'll take our picture 
and we'll confirm that we're safely above the bifurcation and not too high. And true projections sometimes can be helpful if there's an overlap. This is really an excellent placement here, um, showing that we are now ready to proceed with large sheet placement. Pre-closing or not pre-closing, um, this is something we do routinely with um, impella uh, situations, that uh, impella sheath placement, where we think we might actually remove it at the end of the case. Some operators might keep it in there durably, if, even if it needs to go to the ICU um, afterwards if it's not removed. Um, most operators will use two per closes in a pre-close technique at 10 and 2 o'clock, but increasingly some operators are finding that one per close might be sufficient for full impella closure. There's now a rewirable 14 French um, uh, here to allow us to maintain uh, vascular access. Um, this permits safe and controlled delayed closure without manual hemostasis, which is always the most uncontrolled situation, can lead not only to significant bleeding, but rarely it can also lead to thrombosis. Um, we don't know yet if it's safe to leave the pre-closed sutures, uh, per-closes per in um, while patients are in the ICU for concerns of infection, but this is um, increasingly being um, explored in our community. So what about anti-grade limb perfuser? We actually ha absolutely have to protect against ischemia. It's really mandatory for ECMO. This can be placed with both percutaneous approaches or, if difficult, um, will require a cut down. Um, for the impella, it really depends on the post-placement angiogram. It is nice to be able to come from above and directly in inject into the external iliac and see if there is flow past the actual femoral artery once the reposition sheath is out. If not, then a crossover sheath will be needed. This is um, simpler to do if the integrated perfuser 5 French or 6 French arrow sheath is already in the SFA. Um, you may need a long micropuncture needle. Definitely goes well with ultrasound guidance. A braided sheath, again, is helpful in maintaining therapeutic heparin. When that is in place, then one can use the crossover femoral artery and typically a six or seven French sheath from the left femoral artery into the right femoral anagrade perfuser will allow um, a sufficient flow. It's important to stay well um, therapeutically anticoagulated and to have that special male-male adapter that's actually on most manifolds that can be repurposed to connect the two sheaths, uh, the crossover sheaths and the anagrade perfuser. Um, important to then, of course, follow the Dopplers, uh, pulse volume recordings in the leg, and lactate levels closely in the ICU to make sure the leg is being confused well. Um, for external fem fem bypass, this is a picture of how it looks. Um, this is an example where there's no um, uh, angiographic uh, dye penetration past the reperfusion sheath. Therefore, it's decided to place a um, impella, uh, uh, an anagrade perfuser 5 French sheath here. This is a crossover fem fem sheath from the other side. You can see here the male male adapter then allows blood flow to come and directly perfuse the leg. This is an essential way to save the leg during the time where um, the impella may need an extended duration. Recording. Here's an example of a single site technique, which is really, really useful to be able to minimize additional access. Um, Jason Walmuth and colleagues recognize that once the impella is in that 14 French sheath, there's still additional space um, to allow the access of another sheath. In this case, a six or seven French sheath can be used um, by making a micropuncture in the diaphragm of the 14 French sheath. Uh, this is just safely away from the edge. And then a hydrophilic sheath, I found that 25 centimeter sheaths are the most reliable. In the, in the post-closure environment, um, it is still quite possible to do post-closure work. 
That is, rather than having an ICU pull of the impella when the patient's out of shock and ready to have it removed, one can come back to the cath lab, rewire through the rewire port here, and either use pre-closes if that's one preference, but if one has not put pre-closes in, it's still possible to do post-closure. Um, post-closure can be done um, with either one or two per-closes or one per-close and one Jangia seal. Um, the first per-close is usually cinched on the rewire, um, and thereafter um, uh, a second one can be placed um, as needed. Um, that's typically what needs to happen. Um, one nice advance is to do this with a dry closure technique with a second access site where we come up and over from the radial artery to block flow in the external iliac. This again really minimizes the amount of aggressive uh, manual pressure that is needed to have hemostasis during the per close placements. So deploy the first one on the wire and deploy per close number two or Angie CL6 French uh, and see if we can get um, hemostasis. Sometimes that can be an A French. Um, the dry closure approach is to come up and over from the arm or from the other leg. Um, it inflates a typically an 8mm balloon, works very well in the external iliac. Um, the, exter the wire is typically buried in the SFA or in the ipsilateral external iliac. Explant the sheath, secure a dual per close, tighten the first one on the 035 wire, deflate the balloon and look and see how much hemostasis we have. Um, this can be actually a very gentle inflation, two to four atmospheres. Um, when um, full hemostasis is uh, uh, obtained with the balloon um, uh, deflated, then uh, the 03 fire wire can be removed, the second pair of clothes can be deployed uh, and cinched, and we can usually get full hemostasis and really, really nice control techniques. So in conclusion, meticulous attention to pre-procedural, intra-procedural, and post-procedural factors can reduce bleeding and ischemic complications in patients with ECMO or Impella devices. Thanks so much again. It's been a pleasure to be part of Scottsdale Interventional Forum 2020 virtual sessions. Many thanks. Six or seven French hydrophilic sheets ideally can be used side by side. That allows us to have the Impella sheet, uh, the Impella, and a guide sheet in side by side through a single axis technique. And this is really a nice nice simplification it's really great for chronic total occlusion work where one needs to have two accesses we don't need to get a second one here in the leg we can make use of this